Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anake Spaulding, and I am from Jamaica. I have a background in disaster management, and I am from the Faculty of Engineering. Now, today, as we look at the topic that I will be discussing with you using GIS-based scenario modeling to measure the level of exposure to multiple hazards in a vulnerable urban community. And the urban community that I will be looking at today, ladies and gentlemen, is Tamaki Drive area located in Auckland. Now, according to Dr. Rob Bell, a renowned scientist at NIWA, he says that sea level rise in combination with multiple coastal hazards do give rise to more flooding in low-lying coastal areas. So then we understand that there will be flooding in my study area. But what I would like to find out today is by what extent are these assets exposed? Now, this would be the sequential order in which I will discuss my presentation today. Now, yes, climate change is happening and we can see that. But then, low-lying coastal areas are becoming more and more exposed to these multiple hazards. We do understand that. But the reason why I chose this area, ladies and gentlemen, is because never before has there been a vulnerability model scenario has been created for this area. So this is how my study seeks to underpin today. Now, creating the GIS vulnerability assessment model, this is important, ladies and gentlemen, to identify the level, to measure the level of exposure to assets. What I mean by assets, roads, buildings, and population. And then using this model will then give rise to planning, proper planning that would implement structural mitigation measures to mitigate uh, problems. Now, the aim of my research, ladies and gentlemen, is to develop this, mul this multi-coastal hazard GIS-based vulnerability assessment to identify and to assess the exposure to roads, buildings, and population. And then to determine the, le the, the levels of coastal hazards that are exposed in this area, and then using this model to identify the exposure to these assets. Now, the background of Tamaki Drive areas, ladies and gentlemen, include the Oraki North, Mission Bay, and part of Korimahamaha. Now, this area, as you may all know, is a wealthy community and contributes quite a lot to the GDP of Auckland and by extension, New Zealand. Now, this area, of course, the low-lying area with um, gradual increase in terrain as you go up further from the coast and which has very little uh, coastal mitigation measures in place. Now, what I would like to show you today, ladies and gentlemen, are the hazards that affect this area, the multiple coastal hazards, and these are storm surge, coastal inundation, and um, cyclones. Now, cyclones in this area, ladies and gentlemen, we know it to be extropical cyclones. An extropical cyclone, Ita, uh, you, went past New Zealand uh, in 2014, and that caused damage, quite a few damage and flooding within the area. Coastal inundation is simply coastal flooding caused by uh, heavy pouring of rainfall, which will flood the entire coastal area. And then we see storm surge. Storm surge are disastrously high seas that would flood an entire area, um, given the scenario of a cyclone. Now, I've then used um, that to then bring you to the hazards that I will be looking at, what was exposed. So then how the roads, um, well, we all know that roads are critical infrastructure, ladies and gentlemen. We all know that. And if they are flooded to a point where complete devastation, this will cause damage to vehicles traffic accidents, and very much lots of inconveniences. And buildings are quite exposed as well. Um, the, buildings is, the buildings in the area that I found were residential buildings, commercial buildings, and offices. And also the population of the Iraqi local board was uh, 79.5 thousand inhabitants. However, it was around um, 6,060 population within my study area.
Now the methodology, ladies and gentlemen. I use spatial data and non-spatial data. Spatial data, I mean, data that have a specific geo coordinate. It has a latitude and a longitude that can be measured and input in the, in the geographic information system, which is the GIS system. And then I use non-spatial data, which include reports, anecdotal data, and uh, pictorial evidence. Now, drawing upon the Van Thusen's model, which I then adopted in order to incorporate what Van Thusen said um, to develop my vulnerability hazard model, scenario model, I used the, the hazards data, cyclone, inundation, storm surge, as well as vulnerability of the area. What factors made this area so vulnerable? And then I looked at the elements at risk, the roads, buildings, ladies and gentlemen, and the population. Identify the risk index and then the exposure. This will then lead us to Gili et al, which I also use part of his model. And, I, and this part of the model is a, the multi-criterial spatial vulnerability um, analysis, which use several um, approach in order to develop this GIS vulnerability model. And this particular bar to approach is syncs well with the Auckland scenario in that any area that is at sea level and within a little bit above sea level um, is about to be ex totally inundated, which is totally flooded. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the model that I created using the GIS system. Now, remember I spoke to you earlier, Ron, in terms of identifying the level of exposure and then zero here gives you the lowest aspect of vulnerability, and one is most extreme or the highest vulnerability. And from the map, we can see that Mission Bay area, Kori Mahamaha, is most exposed, um, and Oraki is less exposed because the Oraki area has more structural mitigation measures in place. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, the roads assets were, expo were then overlaid, which is to smack on top of that um, model in order to identify which roads were most exposed. Now the roads, as you can see, the very dark shade color red are most exposed. And we can see that being exposed at a part of the Oraki area, Mission Bay mostly, and Kote Mahamaha, which shows more uh, uh, exposure to roads in Kote Mahamaha, uh, Mission Bay, as opposed to Oraki. Then, ladies and gentlemen, I overlaid the building's footprint, and this was quite tricky, <laughs> in that buildings um, were identified as being highly vulnerable. Are those in highest level of red here, and the lowest vulnerability in like peach. And we can see that most buildings are exposed, uh, 413 buildings in the Kori Mahama area, and uh, 313 buildings exposed in the Mission Bay area, and uh, 34 buildings exposed in the, in the Oraki area. For the population data, ladies and gentlemen, I use only residential buildings, then multiplying that by three, which is a standard household size in Auckland, in order to derive the population, the exposure. And then we can also see that the uh, population exposed were more for Kori Mahamaha, followed by Mission Bay and least uh, Oraki, and that's why the reason for that is that um, the buildings in the population buildings are, well, the population in Oraki, they are mostly located on higher terrain and away from the flood boundary. Conclusion today, ladies and gentlemen. My research seeks to add value to the hazards literature. And also, this is, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the first vulnerability model study, index study that has been done for this area in Auckland. And if council would use this data, they could implement this in their planning in order to reduce vulnerability and to increase resilience. And also to be used in land use planning to reduce the vulnerability of key assets. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. And I would also like to thank my tutor, for assisting me with this and my other colleagues who assisted me with this presentation. Remember, hazards do happen, so let's be prepared. Are you doing any effort towards ensuring that this data reaches to 
state council or what sort of steps you are doing uh, to go towards that direction? All right, so my supervisor is quite close to council members. Um, so I would then use uh, through that channel. By the way, my supervisor is um, the, uh, Professor Suzanne Wilkinson, and um, she has close connections with the council. And I have been in um, contact with the council and Tonkin and Taylor as well. Um, so in terms of reaching them, I do have the opportunity to reach them. My question is, Absolutely, that's a wonderful question. Actually, this type of model was used um, in Jamaica. It was also used in aspect of Brazil. And um, it was also used in the Han River Basin in South Korea. So yes, it is quite applicable to other coastal regions. Did I say it right? Did I say it right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Give us the bad news. How bad is it in Auckland that we were to have a uh, coastal hazard come upon us? Well, um, that depends on the category. And this, um, for this model, I use the worst case scenario in that um, areas within a certain distance, or ex for example, areas within um, 100 meters away from the sea is, can be expected um, to flood up to around two meters, 1.8 up to two meters, worst case scenario. But with climate change, we cannot predict this so much. It is, it is climate change is still being studied. It is, it is a mystery. So, <laughs> yeah.